Well, we want to thank uh, Skip Cohen for agreeing to come on the podcast to talk about the new Platypod Extreme. Uh, Skip is a CMO of Platypod and also was formerly with Hasselblad. Skip, thank you so much for agreeing to come on. Well, it's it's an easy one. In fact, even if we hadn't done it by Zoom today, the fact that we're both here in Florida when the rest of the country is still um, reeling from winter weather is kind of a nice thing. So yes, it is. Yeah, happy fact, to be happy next, to be here. Next time we'll have to do this in person. <laughs> well, we could do it if if we weren't right in the middle of the Kickstarter. Yep. Either you guys would have come down here, or I would have come up there. But but yeah, right. um, this is my second kickstarter campaign that i've been involved in it's the uh fourth for for platypod and it's really an amazing science and platform once things get going yes and i want to explain i uh originally saw i guess the kickoff was on the grid with scott kelby last week yes and I, larry was on uh, you maybe you want to explain a little bit who larry is yeah, uh, Larry Tiffenbrun is the founder, inventor, um, CEO, owner of Platypod. What's, it, what's exciting about Larry, I mean, we refer to him as Dr. T, but Larry is one of those guys that when you look at his resume, you feel like, gee whiz, what have I done with my life? He's a full-time practicing pediatrician um, in New Jersey. I think he's, a, he's probably a phenomenal doctor but years before he became a doctor he fell in love with photography and he's a very very talented photographer in fact uh, steve brazel just did a great interview with him on behind the shot tv talking about really talking primarily about photography and i remember when i started working with larry a couple of years ago i needed a full family shot of all of platypod's products and i said to him i'm going to have one of my buddies. I mean, after a lifetime in this industry, I've got an awful lot of friends that I can mooch something from. And I was going to send a bunch of product out to one of them that really did nice tabletop and to see, you know, can you get me a fast family shot? And Larry said to me, well, I can shoot it in my basement this weekend. And I actually said to him, Larry, let me get a re let me get a pro to do this. Never having looked at his smug mug page. He is a phenomenal photographer, capable of shooting just about anything. The passion for imaging runs through his veins, and he's always looking for solutions. And while on a, on a trip out west and hiking, he wanted to find a solution for um, a tripod alternative. Um, so that if you were traveling, you didn't need to schlep along your tripod as one more piece of gear. And that's where the original Platypod got started. And the history of Platypod is actually on the Kickstarter page for this new product. But mm -hmm. it's just kind of remarkable. Um, I, I know I was feeling a little overwhelmed a while back about how much was on my plate to do. And Larry laughed and he said, well, you know, if you want to get something done, there's that old expression about ask a busy man. Um, we need to update that so it's PC correct. So it'd be Appa, ask a busy person. <laughs> person. <laughs> Yeah, but Larry, the point is that that Larry sees patients Sunday through uh, uh, Sunday through Thursday. Friday is his platypod day. Um, Saturday, he's he's off. Sunday is the day that he jumps back in again and starts to cycle over again. And we probably talk three, four times a day over things that are going on in between patients. It's just a remarkable little, it really is a mom and pop company. Yeah. And he's a busy guy then. <laughs> he's phenomenal. Well, absolutely phenomenal. We want to talk about the, uh, and I uh, listened to the, as I said, the grid, tuned in and I jumped on it as soon as uh, it was released on Kickstarter. I thought, well, I'm going to be number one. And it went so fast, I think I was 20, even though I jumped in there right away. So, and I believe it actually achieved its goal within minutes of the... Uh... Yeah, the goal, well, it's, it's funny that the goal is a little bit deceiving. The goal is what any, any Kickstarter promoter needs to have as an absolute minimum to get a project off the ground. Right. The, more, the more activity there is, 
the more revenue you need to be able to build the project and commit to it. Um, so yeah, we we were we were off and running. In fact, by the I think by the time I went to bed on Wednesday night, we were probably about four times what what the original goal was and acceptable for Kickstarter. And how long uh, is that uh, Kickstarter? It goes until May 10th. Till May 10th. 30, okay, so 30, still... 33 day, 33 days. But what's interesting about this particular product is that this product is already in production. Right. So we're not with Platyball. We weren't in production yet. We had outstanding prototypes. We then got caught in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Then we stepped out of line with man, with the manufacturer we were working with because they had some great. We have an amazing engineer. Um, and Marin came up with some ideas on how to improve on the plata on the plata ball, and we stepped out of line. When we came back into line, the pandemic had taken off full force, and there were other companies now ahead of us in manufacturing. Bottom line is, it took us longer to get to where we needed to go. It was kind of like the perfect storm. Hmm. I mean, we got through one pandemic, then we got out of it, then we got we had changes, then we had a COVID lockdown about six months ago in Taiwan. Um, then we hit the Chinese New Year, um, and then we fell into the into the pitfall that so many companies are right now. We have to have everything shipped to us air. We cannot risk a load of platyballs floating off the coast of New York because nobody can figure out how to get a container ship unloaded. And I know I'm simplifying it, but um, just Wednesday, as Larry was on the show, uh, we shipped all the last of our orders for both uh, Kickstarter and Indiegogo backers. And then this week we shipped almost all of the pre-order for Platyball that we had. We have two pre-order programs. The first one sold out. The second one is online now and that'll go until about May 1st, May 2nd. Good. So, what a and there it is. Out. Yeah, I got... Yep. And I want to thank you again for uh, letting us borrow to take to the uh, Black Hills photo shootout last year. You, you let us use a pre-production model. But, yeah, I finally got mine. And yep. um, and let me tell you, that's that thing is nice. We've been using that for a lot of our uh, podcast and, and YouTube recording. Yep. And that thing is like a rock. Yes. I mean, you know, we, oh, yeah. the I love biggest it. thing we used to worry about was slippage with the video camera. Right. And uh, right. this thing has just been really nice. I yeah, I got to get me one of those things. <laughs> well, you know, Jim, you can you can take you can peel off the. Uh, you still got the protective yeah, cover got, on there. Yes, I, I it's, it's still you, brand new. He leaves well, them on. Can, all right, <laughs> he doesn't like to take them off. <laughs> no, no, but you're right. Yeah, I got to take that off there. <laughs> we could we could do this as an unveiling ceremony. <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, there we go. As Jim Caldwell, ladies and gentlemen, peels That's, off the protective coating. That's right. All right. Yeah, that way, say it still looks brand new. <laughs> well, it's not. I mean, I, I've used I, I've used this a lot. Now, I don't shoot the same way you do, mm -hmm. but this thing really is very, very durable. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's 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 solid. And you know, you mentioned there's no slippage. That was one of the first things that Bob Coates out in Sedona, um, who is one of our ambassadors and was pretty much one of the beta testers on this. And Bob just loved it because he's he's doing. I mean, through the pandemic, everybody diversified what they normally shoot, and he was doing some macro um, besides his landscape, and there was no slippage. Um, and I think we actually stayed um, up to 25 pounds, but I know people have tested it a lot farther. Well, I've had used this one here with a um, teleprompter that we use for our uh, right. when we do the regular podcast with the camera on it and no slippage and the other yeah, ball heads that i've used always had a little bit of a sag from the weight of the teleprompter so yeah, yeah i i think the thing that people have commented on the most is the fact that you've just got two buttons yep um the, so often i don't care how, what ball head you've got or how often you've used it that 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 idea of oh wait a minute I just turned the wrong dial yeah <laughs> and I wanted yes. to loosen it this way and I meant to go that <laughs> way it, but being able to loosen it on one and then tighten it on the other is it's, it's pretty well. remarkable and the fact um, that it's basically uh, a ball head I'll say upside down maybe this is the correct way right. the way they should always have been which gives you a lot more 
flexibility. Well, also, also if and there was a there was an image recently of that Dave Williams posted, and if your tripod isn't level, it doesn't it. Here, let's see. Let's try it this way. If your tripod isn't level, you can still level the ball head. Right. Um, and the other piece of this that came out, in fact, Scott Bourne said something to me the other day about if he only had money for one last piece of equipment, he would buy the Arca disc, which we now sell separately. Right. Yes. Because that's no D rings. You can turn it on. You can you can tighten it on your camera. Take it off your camera. I've got three of these here because we sell it separately now. But mm -hmm. I've got three of them here. I just leave them on the camera. Yep. It's like why even bother? Why why bother to take them off unless I'm really doing something where I've got to have even more stability on the camera. But if I'm not, if I'm if I'm just shooting it normally and handheld or doing something else, I just leave this right on the bottom. Yep. Yeah, I think those are those are nice. I I got one because I have this. He has the Max. I have the which one I have before the that? Ultra. The yeah, ultra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. I had the ultra, ultra, and I yeah. wanted I needed that to be able to adapt what I was mounting on this without going through too much rigmarole and I didn't have a ball head that I wanted to use for it so I was able to uh, use what came with this guy and then that plate and right. it's worked very well for me uh, well the ultra the ultra is perfect for cameras with a front weight of two pounds or less mm -hmm. right um, which pretty much takes into account just about every mirrorless camera you might shoot with these days um, even I think I think the 400 millimeter Panasonic Lumix lens I've got is just a hair under, or just a hair over two pounds. Right. Uh, so you've got the the Ultra works just fine. Um, the other reason that people not don't necessarily want the Ultra but need the Max is when you've got the Max, if you're shooting macro, you've got more room to put a couple of goosenecks on and then drop in a couple of the Lumicube right. lights right. or the clamps or a reflector or whatever you're going to be doing, but it's just an amazing it's an amazing little product that scott kelby loves to shoot uh cathedral ceilings and he will regularly have his camera on an ultra on the floor in the aisle of the church and the tripod police don't bother him where mm -hmm. if he were to set up a tripod in a church in a museum there's so many different locations they don't where tripods it. are just not right. allowed or so. want to charge you uh a fee or oh, yeah or a fee a yeah. fee that's right well, we that's want to because talk. that's because you look like a professional. Yes. <laughs> well, we want to talk about the new one that's uh, now right. available. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to you and let. And I should go ahead and admit I am a backer of the new product, and I understand this is going on until May on Kickstarter. It's the Kickstarter backers. Uh, Kickstarter's up live until May 10th. May 10th. And on. Uh, at that time, um, it'll shut down. Within those next two weeks, um, every backer will receive the the usual survey where where shipping um, is charged. And if there are other add-on products that you want to buy, you'll be able to do it at that time. And then we'll be shipping within two weeks after that. So by the end of May, the early what was it called? The first first day backers. I think it was the first day. Yeah, I, it, it's really pathetic when you can't remember your own program. <laughs> um, the first day giveaway, that's what it was. Uh, those backers will be shipped in May, and then our early backers or, or those that signed up for the early backer will get it in June, and the rest of the group will get it in August. Good. But the fact that it's already in production, we will have these units in time. And essentially, let's see. Guys, this is why I'm considered the low-tech poster child of the industry. <laughs> I don't, I don't do this stuff. I sit and talk about business and marketing. Okay. So if you were to, if you were to look at it, um, there it is. I've got a. In fact, let's take the ball head off of it. Mm -hmm. While you're doing that, I'm going to do the same here and show the the previous model. So there's, so there's, there's the, the difference extreme. between the yeah. the previous turn model, it, which is still the, available. All right, right. Turn yours the other way. Yep. The difference, the difference is that the biggest difference is what Larry refers to as instant deployment. Mm -hmm. On yours, you've got that small box up top right. that holds your four screws when you're your spiked feet when you're not using them. Mm -hmm. With with the extreme, you've got the ability to immediately drop them into place, literally taking seconds, 
now you're re- now you're ready to go and they're in place already. Yeah. Now, obviously, if I was shooting on a table, I might turn them. I might turn them the other way around. Mm-hmm. And this is why I don't do these kind of Zoom calls very often. <laughs> you turn around this way, so you've got the rubber feet on the bottom. Right. right. Uh, whereas um, on this, we have to completely unscrew them and screw got them a, mount yeah, them the other way. A, yeah. Now, these on, on the extreme, if for some reason you want to take them out, these are the same quarter 20 um, thread spike feet that we have on both the Max and the Ultra. So they're interchangeable. But in addition to that, Larry did um, designed it with more cutouts. So you've got the ability to strap it to a tree, to a post. You've got handling is absolutely nothing. You've got, hang on a second here. I've got, um, let's go over here. I'm, I want to look at the dimensions. I've got, I've actually got the Kickstarter page open. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got, you've got almost a uh, little over three ounces lighter weight on this one than you did on the Max. Than the Max, yeah. And for somebody that's doing a lot of hiking, it may not seem like much, but that really makes a little bit of a difference. You've got more more threaded holes. There are seven threaded holes, and actually somebody pointed out to us today there are actually eight if you look at the at, at the cap, right. at the extra uh, piece that's here and take that out. All of these will hold all of the regular quarter 20 accessories we have. Like, for example, you could you could easily put, um, you've got your ball head here. And that's and a three-eighths inch, right? That's yeah. a three-eighths in the middle. Um, it, it's just a phenomenal product. Mm-hmm. And again, if the best way and much better than me trying to take you through it um, would just be to go to the Kickstarter page because yep. the video that's there is phenomenal. We're going to put a link here to the Kickstarter page so people can just click yeah, on that's it and great. go right out to it. But it's you can tell that more work has been put into it. You're really uh, taking the design and streamlining, lightning. So it's to me, it's, it's great to see the way that this product is evolving. Could we say that this is a uh, Max on steroids? It's a Max on steroids. There we go. And also slimmed, also slimmed down a little. Now, yeah. it also it also comes in, in a neoprene pouch. It's also got a, a piece for a belt loop and a carabiner so that you wanted to click it to your, to your belt, uh, to a backpack, whatever you were doing for hiking. Um, again, this area is larger and cut out now. You've got more spaces for for belt loops and straps, but the biggest thing is the fact that these spiked feet are are permanently in place, so that you can adjust them to whichever way, whatever, depending on what you're shooting. Now, Dave Williams actually on the website on the Kickstarter page, um, Dave Williams actually has his camera on on a on a chunk of ice ice cave yeah. um, up in Norway and he's got him angled this way to give his camera more stability mm-hmm. you can also I think most people most often are going to use it in the trapezoid and that angle mm-hmm. I can't see my camera right now so am I getting it right yes here? yes okay. yeah. Yeah. we see it right. fine so you'd see it you'd see it in on that angle um, and then same thing again it just depends on how you want to how you want to use them and then when you're not using them um there's a very tiny little groove right here and that brings the point in um if you've got them all the way extended so that they're not going to be in the way it also comes with um four small rubber caps if you want to protect yourself a little bit from the spikes it just depends on how you're using it Phenomenal, and, phenomenal, and great little product, and once again made out of the same durability as as everything as that previous. Platypod has been known to to sell. And there's a uh, also an accessory pack that I assume will be compatible with this, correct? If you want the extra strap. Oh yeah, everything strap. everything in the accessory pack um, is compatible, um, including well the the longer cinch strap. And for somebody that needs a truly long cinch strap, for for whatever reason, let's assume that for some crazy reason you're going to strap it to the roof of the car, um, any cinch strap is going to work. I mean, you could hit you could hit Lowe's or Home Depot mm-hmm. and and buy you know buy one of these eight foot, ten foot straps that are used for furniture movers. Right. It just depends on how you're using it. But that one, but the strap that comes in the multi kit 
is terrific, along with the silicone pad that allows it not to slip. Again, this would be when the feet were up. Um, you've got the spigot adapter, which screws on, um, which is go on to your 3 8 and then that's going to allow you for lighting accessories, um, umbrellas. Hilmar Smith has done, has a great video, um, has a shot of her daughter where she actually dropped an umbrella um, onto the spigot adapter right here. And then you've got the Arca Swiss, you've got another Arca Swiss plate in yep. the multi kit. So and I've used uh, the uh, accessory pack to strap this onto a tree, which would have yep. enough of the strap to go around. Yeah, it's it, it's a pretty phenomenal little product. And like I said, I'm the I'm the low tech poster child. A lot of people don't realize it, but I do not make my living as a photographer. My passion has always been business and marketing, and I've co-authored a whole bunch of books with other photographers that everybody knows and respects. Mm -hmm. And my section of the book is always a combination of the writing and talking about marketing and business. But the reality is that hanging around with so many of you guys for so many years, uh, the difference is that I know more than I let on. But the true difference would be that it would take Tony Corbell 10 minutes to do a beautiful portrait. I could get the same portrait, but it would take me 10 hours or 10 days. Yeah. Understandable. And that's, and, and, that's, and that's the difference. Although I do, I am, I am using uh, Platyball and, and the Extreme a lot. We've got a lot of butterflies here, and we put in a butterfly garden when we first moved into the house. Mm. And we're now getting the uh, Monarch Caterpillars. And I just right. had one hatch out it's, here. Okay, well then I hope you I hope you've learned a lesson that I didn't my first time out. I really wanted to photograph in macro, mm -hmm. and I had I had everything set exactly what I thought would work, and I was just in too close so that the slightest little movement of oh. a wing wound up blurry. So well, we did a couple of years now, ago. Yeah, I actually brought it in the house under lights and did a time lapse. Of the oh, whole I love that. cycle of yep. the chrysalis, yeah, the chrysalis, yeah, yep. Imagine. Well, if you watched, if you watched the, uh, you said you watched the grid last week, yeah. I mean, Lizzie, Lizzie Gad, I, I can't really call her the queen of selfies because what she's she, doing uh, is so remarkable. stunning. I've got to urge and, everybody to go out and watch right. that. She, her pictures, I can't believe how she <laughs> accomplished what she does. It's well, she sets it up with an intervalometer so that it's firing every three every seconds, three seconds and yeah. then she gets herself into the shot where she wants. But she's really just as much a stunning landscape photographer. I've never um, seen Scott as Kelly as speechless. Fine art. Yeah. Well, and you notice he was also speechless when Lizzie's boyfriend, Chris, got up there. Yep. And Chris is, is about to launch his first Prince selling site um may 1st or may 2nd mm -hmm. and that's all in response to scott beating him up of how come you don't have <laughs> this out guess. there and the work between the two of them and with lizzie she's setting it up on a um on a on a platypod at the, mm -hmm. uh, she's now using the extreme she's got the ball head she gets everything set up the way she wants and then goes waltzing into the picture and i've got we have one of her prints that we bought when she launched her fine art program last year and she was telling us the story about it because she was here at our house. She and Chris stayed here on Monday and Tuesday nights. And then we drove up to Kelby's on Wednesday. And she was telling us that the shot that she had where she's sitting on a piece of driftwood out in the middle of the water took her roughly two hours or more to do because every time she got into position, her dog Pepper came <laughs> scampering out onto the water and disturb that that perfect glass-like effect of the water. So she'd have to get back down again, get Pepper back up on the beach, come back out onto the <laughs> onto the piece of driftwood, and start all over again. So well, I'm yeah. gonna urge everybody to go out and look at that uh, the grid. Uh, it, it it is absolutely her pictures are amazing. And like I said, yeah, I've never seen Scott Kelby speechless. <laughs> well, I that's why you know I I have. I have said to her and, and even introduced her a couple times as, you know, queen of the selfies. And then I realized that it's such a disservice to even say that Yeah. because her work is so phenomenal mm -hmm. and it's, it's stunning. I don't, there isn't very often that all of us in the photographic industry want to own another photographer's prints mm -hmm. and she's doing these limited edition prints and 
it's so much fun because one of the things that Larry wanted to do with Platypod was to give photographers a different perspective. And when you're shooting with a Platypod, um, you're going lower, you're going higher, you're, you're going all over the place because you're looking for a, at your subject just in a different way. And I'm going to shut up. I've talked more on this. For, <laughs> a guy that, for a guy that's the low-tech poster child, I'm really doing a lot of babbling here. Well, we do appreciate your time and coming on to uh, our humble little podcast. I'm going to put links out here so people can go out and check out Calby's The Grid and hopefully find uh, the one where Larry announced it. And definitely not and to forget out. getting the... Getting yeah. on to the Kickstarter. The Kickstarter is still available. Yeah. Still can get in there and get, one. get that. I've got now since I have backed that one. I think I was uh, backer number twenty on the early one. <laughs> I thought I was in there first, but it went so nope, quick frene- when he opened it I up. Think, <laughs> yep, I think Frenetic Fox um, is is a regular backer, and I'm pretty sure he. He managed to scoop the number one spot. I'm again. sure. Well, he it's beat just, me, and there was uh, 18 yeah. other ones that got in there before I did. But I'm uh, well. You're still ahead of. Let's see. Right now, uh, right now, I just went over just a few minutes ago. It went over 1,200 backers. So you're well, still ahead of you know 1,190 <laughs> plus. Good. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to getting it. And again, uh, hopefully next time we can do this face-to-face in person and i uh, i love that idea in fact this is a, this is an industry that that we do everything uh somehow we t- we always tie it in with lunch yep uh, for for years i've referred to myself as the biggest lunch slut in the photographic industry <laughs> and there's nothing more fun than getting together it's the reason why i always say when you go to a convention you know, you never eat a meal alone and now that we're starting to get back into conventions again, it's just going to be fun getting back out and being able to be together. Whether, I, I, whether it's a photographer you know or somebody that's br- brand new. I have a suggestion. Next time yeah. you're up in the Tampa area or we're down to Sarasota, to get, let's get together for lunch. <laughs> that, well, that, we'll that have works. our people get in touch with your people and we'll do lunch. <laughs> Well, you're looking at my people. So. And, and, so and, and the same God. here. I got, yeah. We are I can people. Teach, yeah, unless I can teach Lucy the Wonder Dog back there to answer the phone, um, this well, is it. The only thing I got no, is that a squirrel. That sounds like a great idea. It was a pet squirrel. <laughs> I don't think there you he, go. He's not very talkative. <laughs> there you go. All right, well, thank you so much again for taking the time to come on the podcast. All right, Appreciate guys. it. And thank I you. urge everybody to go out there and check on the Kickstarter campaign. You can still get in on it. Check Kelby's The Grid. So you and can. If, uh, yeah, and if you've got an interest in Platyball, and I don't want to sound like I'm pitching here, but I guess oh, I yeah. am. But there's a there's a second pre-order program that just uh, launched last night. Um, there will be a price increase on May second, but here's an opportunity to get it before we have to wait for more inventory again. So we're, should, we've only allocated enough to take us through what we what we estimate will be sold now and then at that point it should start to be available at what we all think of as retail good and we should have mentioned there are two versions this was the elite yes, there that are. we were showing up here yeah yeah the 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 platyball ergo is exactly the same mechanically right. as the elite with the exception of um no the, the electronic leveler. level indicator right okay well thank you again i appreciate all right, guys. it all right guys stay safe and healthy and are you getting the same weather we have down here? I think so. It's pretty much. It's, it's gorgeous pretty nice. Today. Yes, it's good. All right. Pretty much. All right. Thank All you. All right, guys. Take care. Thanks mm-hmm. a lot. Bye-bye.